So we're going to start with a few mantras, which you all know, for auspiciousness. Mangala is also meaning Mars, but it's also something we, it just means auspiciousness, so starting with mantras is always auspicious. So we'll do it, we'll do four times each mantra. Om Ganga Napata Ye Nama 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Lord Ganesha is the principal, you could say, deity for Vedic astrology, Jyotish. <laughs> so, anyway, we always have to honor him. The second mantra was given to the world by Mahashi Parashara, who was the author of the great text on Jyotish, from which everything else seems to be derived. And there's no hope without the help of Lord Shiva. So, all right. So, Let's think about what are the positives of Mars. This is not too difficult. Courageous. Courageous, definitely. The planet of courage. That's why it's the critical planet for yoga. No Mars, no yoga. You know, because it's not just like, wow, my asana is so much better than yours. No, I mean, it, it, the, the real yoga is, requires quite a lot of courage because you're facing your own dysfunction. <coughs> right, okay. More? Assertiveness. Willpower. Assertiveness, willpower, good. Energy, yes, because Mars is the one carrying the Shakti. There is no Shakti without Mars. So there's no nothing without Mars, no life. Yeah? I can. I can. I can. I can. And what was that? Intensity. 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 Yeah? It's part of it, definitely part of it. It is, it's right, it's right. Yeah. Cultivation. Cultivation? Motivation. Motivation, definitely. So you see, in the uh, natural chart, which has Aries as its ascendant, Mars is the ruling planet and Aries represents the head so 
there's no um, you know Mars is the one that gets you out of bed in the morning <laughs> actually the reason why you get out of bed is not actually Aries it is Scorpio because you have to go to the bathroom <laughs> correct that is the answer to that. Why do I get out of the booth? In the Simple. Mars is completely in charge. Okay, here's my little list. You've covered most of it. It gives us the ability to be celibate. It's another reason why it's part of the yoga it's the key for yoga <coughs> at least when you're practicing it helps but there are other reasons why you know you can be celibate just because you had a fight with your partner so there's nothing going on <laughs> you know Mars is all fire and the planet of love is Venus and she's watery so if you, if, you, if you expose the water to enough heat it all evaporates so if Mars is strong enough it's really hard to, to you know, sustain the water so this is a critical thing for us to learn but it is the band of passion All right. Let's see if anyone can think of anything negative. <laughs> Anger. 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 Definitely. Aggression. Aggression. Conflict. 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 Definitely. Impatience. Impatience. I think impatience I'd put first, because that's the beginning of it, isn't it? Impatience turns into anger, turns into conflict. It, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that you, you don't get exactly what you want, so you get angry. When you get angry, your clarity of mind goes down and when your clarity of mind goes down your pranas get disturbed and when your pranas get disturbed you're gone so the, 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 there's this sequence you know it completely destroys everything and the beginning is the you know that impulse of desire which didn't get fulfilled I want something mummy says no so I start screaming right you know and when we're adults we do the same thing only we try and pretend to be adult <laughs> but it's all the same thing at the end of the day we just haven't grown up but the fact of the matter is that when Mars is strong in your chart and little bit afflicted or a lot afflicted then there's this constant feeling of well there's a constant tendency to get frustrated impatient irritated when we don't get exactly what we want <laughs> alright let's see what we got here impatience I put first recklessness, no one mentioned that ah, not necessarily negative because if you are going to, you know, if you're a, like an extreme sports person uh, it's pretty reckless but of course you've trained hard 
you didn't kill yourself so now you're actually quite good at it and it's okay but uh, it's just a well-disciplined version of <laughs> some of the craziness that can happen because Mars like makes you, you feel kind of invincible you can drive you know you can chop down anyone who comes in your way so you go charging forwards you feel like that when you're young you know you really don't think that anyone is going to be able to stop you of course they do <laughs> I remember reading I got you know reminded of Japan because of the Keiko here I, I read somewhere that uh, the thing of the samurai was that however good you were a day would come when you met someone who was better <laughs> that's the, the story of the warrior isn't it okay anger we've had cruelty this is a serious issue now we don't like the word cruelty because we certainly don't want people to be cruel to us but the truth of the matter is that if you, if you break a blade of grass that's a microscopic act of cruelty isn't it you know uh, the story of uh, Sita and Rama so Ravana you're familiar with the Ramayana story? Okay. so Ravana had very seriously misbehaved with many women so a day came when he picked the wrong one and he got cursed that if he violated another woman that would be the end of him so when he, when he kidnapped Sita and she, he was keeping her in the little uh, grove and so he couldn't just go and you know do what he wanted so when he came there she would take one blade of grass and put it between them because he couldn't you know put crossing that one blade of grass would amount to a violation because that was her line right it's a beautiful beautiful yeah so he couldn't so we have to think it's all degrees every one of us every day does something which you know the Jains they try not to hurt anything but ultimately someone chopped your vegetables you know I mean there's some so it's all a relative it's relative but you know certain levels of cruelty are considered unacceptable by our society and yet we see quite a bit of it every day so this is something of Mars that has to be considered this is another serious issue you know this one? only Mars, Mars is the only planet which can seriously disrespect the teacher normally when Mars is you know basically getting what he wants within reason he's very devoted you know he respects the gurus he'll protect the gurus and all that but there's some sort of line that can get crossed he forgets himself and he starts disrespecting the teachers right so this is something we have to watch out for because it's still a sin you know Jupiter it represents the teachers and, and Mars is the, the yogi part of it but if it's strong in our chart that's something we have to control can't get irritated because the, the teacher didn't give us the, the lollipop we wanted today 
All right. So this is the avatar of Nars. Narasimha, you heard the name? You know the story? So there's uh, uh, the demon called uh, Hiranyakashipu, and he had a son, Prahlada. And his son was totally devoted to Vishnu. And for demons, that's not good, you know. Like his father totally disapproved of his son's worship and got irritated, as naturally fathers do when the son doesn't follow their line. And the day came when you know, Prahlada had come to realize that God was in everything. So his father said, I suppose you think he's in this pillar. <laughs> and uh, so he said, okay, God better come out of the pillar because I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> so God appeared from the pillar in the form of a half man, half lion. And this is because, I mean, there's a whole story. Everything in the Vedic literature has a nice story. And so this demon had got you see the demons are very clever they're typical Rahu Rahu is a very smart big head and uh, so he's just the, he has every clever trick so there's one rule you can worship God sooner or later if you worship him with enough effort and you make a big enough sacrifice he or she will come along and say okay what do you want and you can ask for anything except immortality. That's the only rule. But you see, they're so clever. Okay, so he's thinking, how can I get round this rule? But I ask for something that amounts to that, right? So, okay, I can't be killed by um, either a human being or an animal. It can't be during the daytime or during the night time. He had a few clauses. But God said, okay. So when it, the time came, and it was exactly between the day and the night, at that moment, uh, a half man, half lion appeared. <laughs> and he, wasn't, he also had this thing that he couldn't be uh, killed on, standing on the ground. He hadn't, neither you know. Low, yeah. That's it. Was something hard, was something yes, exactly. <coughs> so, you know, it doesn't matter how clever you are, you can't trick God. You know, it's a very important thing to consider because it's not just a story, it's like how we think. You know, what are we, like people pray, what are we praying for? You know, you think, well, I can't just ask God for like a helicopter because that sounds a bit greedy. So I'm going to, you know, modify it so it, you know, amounts to the same thing, but it sounds good, right? <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, the lollipop we want. But I mean, it's just, it's completely demonic. The demons meditate for selfish reasons. I want this, I want to be this, I want to get something out of it. That's what we call asuric or demonic meditation. I mean, I'm using strong words here, but it's, this is what the, the Vedic literature is teaching us with these stories. You know, if, if you're meditating only because you want to know God, nothing demonic about that. It's completely divine know yourself so anyway that's the thing so so Mars is half man half lion so the point is sometimes human sometimes inhuman sometimes protecting life sometimes destroying life those two it can go both ways like you know the, the general who fights according to the rules that's Mars in his sort of human form. But when he sees he's not winning, then he starts doing the dirty tricks, <laughs> the guerrilla warfare, whatever it is. So in, in terms of, from another point of view, resorting to using like uh, black magic, 
this is Mars going down the wrong path you're not getting what you want so you start manipulating in whatever way you do you know this is this is where we're straying from the path of humanity into inhumanity so that you get these combinations especially between Mars and Rahu if it's the right sort of combination in the chart these are the people who become the experts in these tantric mantras and start using them for very inappropriate purposes which is basically selfish anything that is selfish is inappropriate because selfish means you taking from somebody else in some respect huh? so we have to be careful of that because knowledge of mantra is good Rahu and Mars can both give knowledge of mantra we may know all those kind of uh, dangerous mantras but we should not use them you know for those kinds of inappropriate purposes so these are the things all right so it's a little summary of the relationships so the sun is a friend the sun and Mars are both fire elements the moon is a friend even though the moon is watery so water and fire don't go too good together right they're actually a kind of bad combination because for obvious reasons but there is a friendship between the Mars and the moon that's why Mars in Cancer is not a great disaster at all lots of great people have Mars in Cancer Mars is the planet that makes Cancer the Cancer Lagna requires Mars to become great Mer Mercury is an enemy Mercury is the number one enemy of Mars there's, it's very very you know there's intense and they're the two planets that actually give the Hatha Yoga interest it's because well Mars is the one that wants to do the exercises and Mercury is the knowledge and the wisdom and all that but the Mercury represents the physical structure you know if Mars gets angry it's Mercury that takes the hit so for Mar particularly for Mercury Mars is a pretty serious problem but then if they're nicely balanced in some way you become like a great engineer engineers Mercury Mars is a and Narasimha avatar is typically Mercury Mars you know that can make us interested in worshipping that form of God because it's a Vishnu form Mercury represents Vishnu and Mars is the particular one okay Jupiter's a friend Venus is neutral so Mars and Venus you know that problem that comes when they're together is the problem of the water and the fire sometimes the water puts the fire out sometimes the fire dries up the water so this is kind of an oscillation intense passion and then nothing you know flip flopping kind of thing but if two people have that then they're quite good together they may not you know one is off the other is on and then they're off and then the other one's on and, but they have somehow understand each other right? okay Saturn's neutral because he's the servant so why should we have any attitude towards him except neutrality but Rahu is a serious enemy of Mars Rahu is the, is the general of the demons and Mars is the general of the gods so they're constantly at war but Rahu is cleverer than Mars so <laughs> it's an issue and then Ketu and Mars is a pretty serious problem again because they're so fiery the fire g can get completely out of hand yes 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 but Mars is exalted in Capricorn so all right so where's Mars strong Aries where else 
Scorpio, Capricorn. Everyone knows that? Mars Strong in Virgo? Didn't think of that, did you? No. <laughs> You'll see if you look at charts. Very strong. Okay, 10th house. You know this thing? Mars is strong in the 10th house? Dig Digvala. We say directional strength. <coughs> so, how many people have Mars in the 10th house? I mean, maybe not all of you know your charts. Bill. Okay, I have to, I'm not allowed to say anything mean about Mars in the tent. Because, <laughs> <laughs> let's face it, Bill is the nicest guy. One of the <laughs> nicest people I've ever met, you know. But other people with Mars, apart from you, of course. <laughs> okay. And obviously the first and eighth house is a Martian type of house. And it's good to remember that Mars is the karaka, that means the significator of the third house. Third house is courage, so particularly courage. Third house is where we pick up our weapon, so it has to be Mars. Okay, so what if Mars is weak? This is the thing about Mars and Saturn. Because Mars wants what it wants and it wants it now. And Saturn says, no, you're going to have to wait for some time. It's, you know, Mars just can't tolerate it. It's just awful, you know. But, you see, Mars and Saturn is the perfect combination for yoga. I mean, I've hardly seen a single yoga teacher that didn't have some Mars-Saturn thing going on. Because it's disciplined action. It's the same with athletes. If they don't have Saturn, they're never going to train and train and train till they're really good. It requires a tremendous amount of work. You know, holding those poses. It, Saturn is the critical planet for it. So, this is the... If people are kind of have too mild, they're frustrated, impatient, all that because of Mars being... Saturn sitting on Mars, you know, really encourage them to go to a yoga class. They'll calm down. Right. It's the best remedy. Otherwise, you know, endless trouble from that frustration. You're miserable, you make everyone else miserable. Mm -hmm. Now, what I wanted to do is look at, look at some mantras. I've written this little book, Yoga of the Planets, and this is the front cover. And each planet in the Vedic astrology, there's nine of them, has a set of 108 mantras. And these mantras are kind of go through all the different energies of that planet. So you, you go through the 108 mantras, and they're very simple mantras. And by the time you've been through the whole thing, you've kind of, the whole, it sort of awakened all the beautiful energies of that planet. So it's been used traditionally, you know, for hundreds of years as a remedy. And it also has a lot of knowledge in it. And it's not just astrology. You know, it's, it's really very yogic. Because most of the mantras have, you know, you can interpret them on a very high level to do with yoga, self-realization, Kundalini and all that. So what I've done is I've written, you'll see, I, I did the, you know, I've listed the mantras, each mantra has a translation and then some kind of a commentary. I've just discussed it a bit. So that's the cover of the Mars book. You can get this on Kindle as a separate little book, very inexpensive, and then in a few weeks we'll have the printed book which has all of the nine and some extras goodies okay so it really goes through all the energies of course th for the malefic planets some of the things are more challenging so we'll have a look at that but it really brings out the highest qualities and then the, 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 book, uh, the book explains how to find out which mantras are really specific to your chart and it's really easy. It, I made it so easy that it, like any yoga teacher really knows nothing about Jyotish can even if they don't even have somebody's chart they can pick out mantras 
for the student. So I'm, I'm, I mean the few yoga teachers I've shown it to, they think it's really great. I'm hoping it will become popular in the yoga world. Because I think, you know, what I found out, people have started, there's a lot of interest in these mantras for the planets amongst people doing yoga. But they're not using proper mantras, like they're just taking some mantra from somewhere without any idea what they're doing. Some of those mantras are not supposed to be used in certain circumstances. But these are, these are very simple. Okay. So this is the third mantra of the, the set. And this is the one that's probably uh, very well known. Om Mangalaya Nama Om Mangalaya Nama Om Mangalaya Nama You see, this is what we want Mars to be auspicious. It's capable of being auspicious, but it has other tendencies. So this mantra is, is a, like a prayer to Mars to be auspicious, to give us all the, the good things it can give. So it's a very, very positive mantra. Oh. Mahaviraya Mahaviraya Nama Nama Om Mahaviraya Mahaviraya Nama Nama Om Mahaviraya Nama So vira is, is like uh, you know the English word vital or virile they're all coming from the word vira and so it really has that sense of tremendous energy and uh, potency so this is like you're feeling a bit weak you could do this mantra do it for a few minutes you'll probably start feeling really good yeah Om Mahabala Parakramaya Nama Om Mahabala Parakramaya Nama Om Mahabala Bala Parakramaya Nama Okay. So Mahabala means tremendous strength and Parakrama is courage. So this is totally Mars. So my point here I'm put a few extra words on this slide. So, you know, someone said attacking, like, you know, the army that's attacking and it with tremendous strength and, you know, no sense of weakness is one thing. But if all, in order to really accomplish the goal of yoga, you have to have that kind of determination. So, it goes both ways only I think the the sort of yogic I, I prefer that personally <laughs> but let's face it if our country is under attack we want our soldiers to have this kind of attitude oh Oh, I 
So this is so beautiful because this is, you know, uh, the fire element when it's balanced. If somebody has a really strong but balanced fire element in them, they're very compassionate. You have to treat them with respect, but if you do, then they'll be they'll go out of their way to look after you, protect you, and all that. So this is really one of the most um, beautiful, you know, mantras of Mars, I think. So if we, you see, all of these things are are really desirable qualities that we would like to have. So if we find that sometimes we're being a little bit cruel or unkind because we got irritated, we didn't mean to, but it just happened because that's what it is with Mars. So we could do this mantra. It'll activate that quality more. You know, it's this whole point about remedy. You know, these things bring up these positive qualities. Yeah. So this is this is a particularly lovely mantra. Om Sukha Pradaya Sukha Pradaya Nama Om Sukha Pradaya See, look at this, the giver of happiness. And it's easy to understand because if there is no security, nobody is happy. You know, the police and the military are there to mean that we can get on with our lives without anyone troubling us, right? We can be happy. We can have our party, we don't expect, you know, mayhem to break out at any moment because... So, the, the Mars element, that's its job. Like we said, for, for Cancer Ascendant, which is the natural fourth house of happiness, the, the planet that gives it all its power is Mars, what we call the Yoga Karaka. So, the Mars' vital role when it comes to our happiness in life. It just has to be in the proper place because the, the people protecting us are in the right place and the people they're protecting against are other Mars type people who might be troubling us. Afflicted Mars. So, so it's just a matter of the the, you know, everybody, you know, it's very hard to get a completely unafflicted Mars. So these mantras help bring out the, the best qualities and get over the whatever degree of affliction we might have. I mean, I have Mars in the first house. If you have Mars in the first house, does anybody know if they have Mars in the first house? A couple of honest people. <laughs> I mean, it's very hard. You, you, you get irritated easily. You know. <laughs> you can do. Thank God mine is combust. Om <laughs> Varadaya <laughs> It's a beautiful mantra, I think the time is limited so I won't turn too long, but he can give you boons. In fact, this is the thing, you know, people who are Mars, real Mars types, they like to give boons because somehow it makes them feel good. You know, like if you're the, the great conquering hero, I mean, it's sort of like part of your honor is to help people 
if somebody comes crying to you, you help them out, you give them stuff, you know. King goes around the country, these people don't have a dam, I mean a well, dig them a well, these people don't have that, give them that, you know, it just keeps issuing orders, everyone is running after him, digging the well. It's a very lovely quality. All right, so then I thought, let's take a, see whether I have any saints in my database with Mars Art Makarika. The Art Makarika is the planet in the chart which most describes the incarnation, the current incarnation. So it's like we say, the self, the significator of the self. So this was one. She, anyone heard of Sri Ramanuja? He was a few years ago. Yeah, anyone from India or had a strong Indian connection. He's very well known in India because he left a huge imp impression in the country. He went round and he established so many things. So anyway, so he was a great saint. In Mars Art Makarika, Mars in the first house in Cancer. You see what I said? If you have Mars in Cancer, don't feel bad. There are lots of top grade people like this, you know. So he, he's, he's famous. He's, uh, he was born in 1017 and he's still famous. Okay, so what we do is to find out the mantra that goes with this Mars we have to count the number of Navamshas and one Navamsha is one ninth, one ninth of a sign. So the nine Navamshas in a sign so we count round the number of signs multiplied by nine and then we add a few extras wherever it is in the house or the sign that it's in. So in the book there's a little table and if you have the any astrology printout Vedic astrology that gives the degree of your planet you can look it up immediately you give it straight away. But if you have my software okay. vedicsoftware.com it will show you so you see Mars is number 36. It's good to see what is Mars. Well Mars is the Art Makarika so it's definitely about him. Whatever houses it rules. But here it's ruling the, the 5th house and the 10th house. So we can look up 36. And this is what we find. Om Vita Ragaya So it means completely free of greediness. I mean, it's obviously a characteristic of a saintly person. How many of us are completely free of greediness? Raga is passion, greed, anger, envy. All these negative things of Mars are just missing in him, according to this. You see, it, it actually is very appropriate. So, the point is that if the Kundalini is awakened, if one's you know, yogic practice has gone to that point that you've really balanced yourself, then it creates a kind of evenness where you, you, you've got over your impatience and all those things, the willfulness and all those sort of lower en ele energies of Mars. And so it's... it's the product of Mars, the Shakti has risen and produced this state. So the difficulty with the lower states of Mars is Raga. But with Mars's help as the, the Shakti, you can rise to a state that's Vita Raga, without Raga. So, you know, doing the mantra helps. It's an uh, inspiration for that. How about this one? <laughs> this is a yoga farm. I was looking for things with Mars Art Makarika and there weren't too many. That's why I had to go back a thousand years to find some chart. And then there was a yoga farm, okay. So um, Mars is there in the fourth house, Art Makarika, and it's uh, number 87. And you notice it's in Capricorn. So this is exalted, yeah, you see. 
And like I said, Mars Rahu can give knowledge of mantras. Here we are, we're sitting here doing mantras in the yoga form. It's a very beautiful thing. Om Go Madhyacharaya Jacharaya Nama. So, you know, there's a simple, obvious meaning. Go, Madhya, Charaya. Madhya is the middle, Chara is moving, and Go is in. Normally, you're talking about the planet, so Go actually represents the planet, but the literal meaning is the cows. So, Brindavan. See? I hadn't forgotten that. Moving in the midst of the cows, it's uh, Lord Krishna, isn't it? Highest level of the consideration. You know, I mean, there's so many levels to this meaning. I mean, you, people say, oh, it just means that Mars is moving around, it's a planet in the sky, right? No, but there's so much more to it. You know, that Swamiji has fortunately enlightened us very high level meaning, you know. And then there are lesser meanings where it's just like somebody surrounded by wealth, you know, or followers. Or so basically it's the, it's the hub, the hub of goodness. Those, the cow represents goodness. So it's very appropriate, I thought. You know, both these two are very appropriate. All right. This is always good darshan. Swami Shivananda. Now he's not Mars Atmaka. I ran out of the Mars Atmaka because, but you see, you don't have to. You can apply it to people regardless of whether they're Mars Atmaka. You you can look up Mars. Anyway, it's in his first house, so it's important. He has the Mars Rahu in the first house. This is his ashram. It has Mars and Rahu in the fourth house, place of the property or ashram. So, you know, obviously it's very important. But then you can also, for particularly for, you know, saintly people, since the Atma Karaka is really like the soul, then you can count from the Atma Karaka to the planet, and that is something significant. So, he, in this case, he's a son, Atmakarika, and the son is 30, uh, 43, and Mars is 32. So, you go 32 minus 43, and it's negative, so you add 108, because 108 Navamshas in the zodiac. And you always have to add 1, because the first Navamsha is 1, not 0. It's simple, you get 98. This is um, simple math. Okay. Om Shama Yuktaya Nama Om Shama Yuktaya Nama Probably the first time you look at Swami Shivananda's child, you kind of think, oh my God, Mars and Rahu in the ascendant. But when we look into it, look at it. Complete embodiment of compassion. Yeah. You were with him for so many years. Incredible. And if we look at the other one, Oh, Shudjaye Nama. Oh, Shudjaye Nama. Oh, Shudjaye Nama. Completely pure. 
Isn't that beautiful? That Mars is just something else. Huh? Not a trace of any of that negative. Here's another great saint, Ramakrishna Paramahansa. So he has Mars is number 88, his Atmakaraka is Rahu, and we count from one to the other, we get 79. Om Guna Vibhushanaya Nama Om Guna Vibhushanaya Nama Om Guna Vibhushanaya about that. Decorated with all the good qualities. Amazing. And here's the other one. Om Shastra Vidya Visharadaya Shastra, Shastra Vidya, Vidya Visharadaya Nama. Nama So this, this means Shastra Vidya is the knowledge of uh, weaponry but of course that includes all the uh, you know the psychic powers Visharada means a completely in, in total perfect knowledge of it it's a siddha, basically, come a kind of omnipotent sort of energy. So that, you know, these great saints, they're just something else, you know, they have this... You cannot fathom the extent of their power. You know, so, okay, so we could say for an ordinary person, he's gone to military school, he's learned how to fire this and that gun and all that. This is a completely different level of the whole consideration. He hardly knows how to defend himself, but this incredible, huh? Om Vichakshanaya Nama Om Vichakshanaya Nama so this means far-sighted. This is why Mars is connected to Jyotish, because it can give that kind of ability. It, it can make you very uh, wise, learned, skillful, expert, and circumspect. Okay, last mantra. Om Kamaniya Nama. So, like I said, you know, these sets of names and explanations and mores are available on Kindle. Uh, there's one, the, the, the chapters are quite long, so I made them into a series of books. And then the printed book will have everything. And there's a bonus Secrets of Imshotri Dasha, some things new insights. Any questions? Yeah, that's in the printed book. 
that will be of interest, I think, to anyone seriously interested in Jyotish. When is coming? Uh, very soon. I go home, tidy up and send it to the printers. So you can pre-order on the website yogaoftheplanets.com See what I found was, and this was a good 20 years ago, I was in India and I found these lists and there was, even they were, it was not easily found. I mean, there was one or two people that just printed the Devanagari and, you know, I thought it'd be useful to provide them with some translation. So that's how I started on the book. <laughs> so it's more than 20 years I've been working on it. So, you know, I talked to the authors of those two books. I, I went to see both the authors and you know, they, they told me it was from some medieval sources, but they didn't really know the original. You know, it's just traditional. The astrologers have known these things. They've used them for hundreds of years. It's part of the remedies. And, uh, so basically, reciting them as a remedy, uh, they contain quite a lot of knowledge. It remind, you go through it as an astrologer. It keeps reminding you of certain things about the planet. Um, then it even has a, you know, it tells you what's the gem, what's the, how to decorate the murti, what's the things to offer, there's all that sort of knowledge in them. But even when it's doing something like that, there's still always some kind of higher energy to it. There's some, you know, yogic aspect, even when it's appearing to just describe something mundane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the names gives that. So, you, for remedies, you see there are various forms, there's Murugan, Kartikeya, Subramanya, Skanda. So it, it depends, but the, the one in the, the list is Subramanya. So that mantra is given, and that is the best mantra to use, because that, no, that one invokes knowledge, not war. So I recommend Superman. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, because of the fan, it's a little. Yes, Mars is strong in Virgo. That's a one of the little secrets. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, planets have places where they're strong that is never been taught in the Jyotish classes. But it's strangely enough it's Virgo for Mars and finally you know when I first learned that I started looking up some boxes and every single one of them I looked at had Mars and Virgo after about the fifth or sixth I said okay fine <laughs> so it seems to be strange but then what, what is your rationale behind it? ah well that's another lecture you know. It's a very deep thing and it's based on some teaching in Parashara. Parashara teaches so much and it's beautifully hidden right in front of our noses. And you would never think of it if someone hadn't given you the hint, you know, basically. But um, if you study, the, I'll give you a hint, all right? <laughs> if you study the exaltations of the planets, you'll get to this. So if you can figure it out, let me know. That's exactly what I was coming to say. Uh, Saturnus, the Saturn in Virgo, uh, sorry, Libra, and um, uh, Mars is the Saturn in Capricorn. Yes. And uh, some kind of a connection there. And there, going back and forth, it's like, can't calculate the why it is there. You see, you've got, to, you've got to find the right verse in Parashara and then you've got to properly interpret it. See, Jaimini, he put everything in code. You know, he, because he's Ketu, he just converted everything. So it's extremely difficult to figure, you know, and there's layers and layers and layers and layers. Parashara, it's all apparently right there in front of you. He states it as it is, but he's also very brilliantly you know, there's a little thing he says, underneath it is a whole universe of knowledge. So, 
anyway, I mean it's a big topic you know, it takes years to study Prahasha and more years to study Jaimini <laughs> so those who are really that's their obsession they can talk to me <laughs> but, uh, yeah it's very interesting when you get into it because you see the thing is you can't really learn this thing unless you have that kind of mind that wants to dig into it it's no good somebody just tells you it's not the job of the teacher to just tell you everything uh, they say actually the teacher teaches you 25 percent the rest you get either from your own research or from talking to your other student friends or from practice and experience you know. so yeah I thought that it would be because it's in the natural sixth house but obviously not huh? no. I mean maybe that's some little bit of it but that's not the technical derivation <laughs> It's like the, you know, in the book it shows my t explanation of why the uh, the lengths of the Vimshotri Dashas are what they are. You know, and for 30 something years I've been trying to figure it out and one day it just by some grace it came into my head. I mean it wasn't like I'm not taking any credit for it, I just just came to me and it's very simple and rational slightly mathematical but it's nothing terribly difficult to understand so you know that's the thing you, if, you, if you're dedicated to this knowledge then these things all start revealing themselves and that's the only way you really get it you know because it's meant to be like that that's why K2 is the planet of of uh, astrology is the planet of intuition don't expect you know Mars is like issuing orders which amounts to the lord of the first and the third is this and the lord of the first and the fourth is this this is the Mars Jyotish right <laughs> it's perfectly fine perfectly fine memorize all that you won't be bad you will be okay but K2 has some other attitude you know it's sort of like he'll say one thing, then he'll say something that appears to be contradictory so you have to sit there banging your head like why is it this true and that true and what have I missed and one day it'll go click and you're oh, wow that's incredible you know it's a completely different approach but it opens the brain because in order to get to that thing you had to you know some kind of chakra had to open and when it opens it's like so much more valuable than all the memorization you know, you've got a genuine realization. That's why K to the Moksha Karaka. The whole process of Jyotish is the process of spell realization, which you know Jaimini explains in his sutras. Actually, anyway, thank you very much, Swamiji. Very, very, very grateful for your organizing the conference and inviting me. In. Thank you very much. We look forward to uh, your book and your teaching. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, do come back to the next year's conference. Yeah. Definitely. Um,